for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Uh, today's category, I forgot the official name, but it's chickpeas. Chickpeas, please, I believe is what we're calling it. And um, I am Elizabeth. And as usual today, I'm joined by Katie and Beth to tell us about their recipes. So Katie, tell us about what you made with chickpeas. Okay, well, I am not really sure why I struggled so much with this category because I love chickpeas, but I think maybe it had to do with a recipe that I've shared recently uh, for Middle Eastern salad tacos that had chickpeas in it that was so good. And I know, Elizabeth, you said you tried it too and you really enjoyed it. And I just like, I kept on making things and being like, well, this isn't as good as that. I was going to share with you guys a just like a salad that had some asparagus in it, but I didn't love it. So I ended up last night at the last minute sort of deciding to switch things up and just share with you a recipe that my husband Andy makes for us for dinner on a regular basis. This is something that we just make all the time because we almost always have all the stuff for it in our house. So it's very simple. This We call it tandoori chicken cauliflower and chickpeas with a rata ish sauce so the first thing that you do is you make the sauce so we call it a rata ish sauce so it's like rata or tzatziki because it's like a cucumber uh yogurt sauce but in no way is it like traditional we just kind of throw some things together and you can make this, you want to make it like an hour ahead of time just so that it gets some time to like meld the flavors together. But you can also make it a day or two ahead of time too if you're planning on making this. So you just take like three to four tablespoons of Greek yogurt. And something that we've found too that you can do is that you can buy like a single serving of Greek, like plain Greek yogurt in like the individual containers. If you don't want to buy like, or you're not, don't, aren't used to keeping like a big thing of Greek yogurt in your fridge, you can just use one of those little ones and it makes enough sauce for two people. So you just add to your Greek yogurt, some lemon juice, about two inches of a grated cucumber. You just grate it onto some paper towel and then squeeze out some, but not all, like most of the liquid, but you don't have to be like crazy about making sure you get all the liquid out. And then you um, grate like three cloves of garlic, put that in a bowl with some salt, pepper, stir it all together and cover it and let it sit until you're ready to eat it. Then you just cook up everything else. So for your chicken, you take just one chicken breast. Usually they're pretty big, so we butterfly them so that you're making two pieces of chicken. You season both sides of the chicken pieces with salt and tandoori seasoning. Um, tandoori seasoning, it varies depending, like in its ingredients, depending on where you look at recipes or where you buy it. We buy ours from the Spice House in Ann Arbor and it contains paprika, coriander, cumin, garlic, ginger, cardamom, and saffron. But I've seen it with different combinations of those ingredients or not all of those ingredients, just some and then others added in. But one thing that I noticed when looking at the recipes is that it's just like an equal part of each of them usually. So you can just mix it up and make it however you want it to be. You can also use a combination of spices that's not tandoori and it happens to work great with this recipe too. Like we used shawarma before. Uh, you can just really use whatever you like. Um, so you've got your chicken seasoned. You just put that in a small nonstick pan with some olive oil, cook it, flipping it over every couple of minutes until it gets to temperature of 165. As you're cooking your chicken, you make your cauliflower and your chickpeas. So we take a bag of frozen steam in bag cauliflower and nuke it for about the half the time that it's called for. So it's about three minutes. And then you dump that in a large nonstick 
pan with some olive oil and most of a can of chickpeas. So like all of the can of chickpeas is just a little bit too much. So you usually save the remainder just as like a salad topping or something. Um, and then you put, you know, so you put all of that in your pan, add some salt and some tandoori seasoning to that. Cook it all up together on medium high, flipping it every couple of minutes until everything is cooked through. And you just put your chicken and your veg on a plate with your sauce. And that is dinner and it's delicious and easy. And we really like to eat that. Yum. Yeah, that sounds so good and easy. And I am not familiar with, like, I can't in my mind picture tandoori flavoring or like what that tastes like but I know I've had it you know um but it just sounds so good and I love how easy it is and um the yogurt sauce is a nice like cooling element there too yum yeah definitely yeah sounds very tasty yep it was it's definitely a good on I'm glad that I landed on sharing that one with you guys yeah. something that um I wasn't super happy about uh but Beth please tell us about your chickpea please recipe. Okay, well, it may not be any surprise to you that I decided to use another recipe from Cooks Illustrated because they did the chickpeas do it all. And they do, but I, I did pivot on which one I I ended up making this time. So th there's a chopped salad with spiced skillet roasted chickpeas. Pretty simple. It does, it says it takes 45 minutes. I did it in sort of like I did my chickpeas separate, but let me just go into it. So it takes two cans of chickpeas rinsed and patted dry, which I meant to ask you, Katie, do you rinse? Did you rinse yours? Your yes. Yeah, okay. we, do, we do rinse our chickpeas. That's a good question. Okay. Most of the time you do, but okay. Rinse and pat dry. It calls for uh, smoked paprika, tape, salt, pepper, uh, olive oil, Sherry vinegar, I had red wine vinegar, honey, Dijon mustard, thyme, English cucumber quartered um, and lengthwise, and then cut into half inch pieces, eight ounces of cherry tomatoes, two ounces of baby arugula, a couple ounces of feta cheese, and uh, this called for a third of a cup of hot papadou peppers. However, I, and it's so that if you, if you don't have those, you can substitute with pepperoncini. And I ended up using banana peppers and it was also really good that way because that's what I had. Um, also, you can uh, switch this up, the arugula with spinach, kale, romaine, or a combination, but you know I love my arugula. So it's super simple though, but okay, the the, the process for the, uh, the frying the chickpeas was different because um, first we microwaved them and I'd never done that before. Um, and you put a paper towel on the plate and spread them out in one, you know, uh, layer, which was a little bit tedious just cause anyway, just is, um, you do that, uh, and nuke it for like, it said eight to 12 minutes. And I think I did it for nine and it came out and it was just all crusty on the outside. It was, um, really great way to speed it up. Um, because then you end up frying them. You toss it with uh, the, the paprika and salt and pepper, half of that mixture. Um, wait, I'm probably mixing. No, that's, yeah, I, I made something else last night. So forget about half, you use it all. Um, and so you toss your chickpeas with the, the seasonings. And then fry it. No, you fry it first, then season it. Then you put it on your paper towel that's laying on your pan. It's very fussy as this magazine is about, but it's not that complicated. Um, anyway, then you, so you've got a uh, nice crunchy chickpeas. You make a, a dressing with the vinegar, honey, Dijon. It calls for time. I use, uh, parsley because I had fresh parsley and some salt and pepper and then you uh, combine cucumber tomatoes arugula quarter cup of the feta and the peppers half the chickpeas in the now empty bowl that you had uh, uh, 
seasoned your your chickpeas with and then um uh toss it all together and then as you serve it you put more of the chickpeas on top and feta and dressing and you yeah dress first but anyway that was it it was uh it was very good i i had it it was all i needed for dinner personally but um yeah it sounds delicious i mean yeah. the preparation sounds a little fussy but it seems like if you didn't want to do that you could also just throw like you could kind of I mean, I know you said the microwave part was good, but you could probably skip that and just you could get the good flavoring. Um, but, but it's yeah, good. it would it did make a nice texture though. Mm -hmm. And let me just remember, I I started to talk about this article, but I just need to share that they are cute culinary chameleons. These chickpeas are a chick. May I uh, take your mom? Okay, a chickpea's texture varies dramatically depending on the cooking method. When simmered in a stew, its starch and protein absorb liquid, turning the creamy flesh downright silky. Microwaving and frying, as we do for our salad, causes the roly poly shapes to split slightly at the seams and develop tiny fissures. When oil enters these pathways, the hot oil rapidly vaporizes internal moisture, and the legumes expand like popcorn. Oh, wow. turning light and crispy yum yeah so that's, that's that's really cool i've been yeah. seeing a lot of chickpeas for salads lately like rather than because i always, always put chickpeas on my salads but i usually just leave them plain but i've been roasting them all lately so i'm really excited to try that new technique i think it sounds really interesting just to see like what the differences are that sounds yeah. and also i loved um that you put banana peppers on here like it, as soon as you said that my mouth started watering because I really like that combination of flavors a lot and it's been a while since I've had that so yeah that sounds really good yeah it was I loved the banana peppers because it had this little tang to it and it For just sure. yeah I liked it it was a good one so yeah yeah no, no it just I was gonna just say that um the arugula, I know it didn't call for that, but that seems like it would be no, it, really delicious. Yeah, it did. No, it called for it, but it said you could substitute. Oh, okay. But you, yeah. You and okay. I did use arugula. Yeah. But um, it worked for me. And yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So let's hear about your uh, foray into chickpea world. Elizabeth. Okay. I got a new cookbook from here, the library. This is called mm -hmm. Zaytinia. Um, delicious Mediterranean dishes from Greece, Turkey, and Lebanon. Um, lots of really good ideas in here. Um, some unique ingredients that I never like that in cookbooks because I'm like, I'm not gonna go find this special cheese. Um, I mean, I respect that that's the cheese that they use in in the Mediterranean, but there were some really cool ideas. Um, and it was beautiful. The pictures are beautiful. But anyway, I just decided to try my hand at making um falafel so um basically the okay so i'll i'll get to the I'll, I'll i'll give you the short version first this worked out fine it wasn't hard it was a pain and i don't think i think you should just go to drew's Slim garden and get falafel but <laughs> anyway um so this called for dried chickpeas i don't really work with dried beans so i just used cans so basically you take um two cups of chickpeas leaves from a bunch of fresh cilantro um leaves from a bunch of parsley and then a, a stalk of chopped celery small onion half a leek and and two garlic cloves and you um this is the other thing that i modified they're like position a meat grinder attachment i was like well i don't have that so anyway i used a food processor and that was totally fine you um, pulse all that until they're kind of finely minced, you know, like you would have for falafel. And then you put those ingredients in a large mixing bowl. In the meantime, you w it did call for um, half a cup of chickpea flour, which I did buy because I just wasn't sure how that would work to modify it. S whatever. So it's fine. So you whisk together half a cup of chickpea flour, a little bit of baking powder, some salt, a um, little bit of baking soda, um uh co coriander cumin pepper and then it called for allspice um in a small bowl and you basically sprinkle this over the 
ground up mixture and you mix it till it's combined. Um, and then you have a baking sheet that's lined and you scoop tablespoon size balls or whatever size you want. I did keep them pretty small onto the um, baking sheet. And then this is when you have to fry it, which home frying is always tedious to me, but you heat just three inches of oil in a big saucepan. Um, and then you plop them in and let them fry up. And um, they that was fine. You know, it really wasn't a problem. It was just messy, you know, and um, I find it, I'm not a very good fryer. So I find keeping the oil the right temperature really difficult. Like it gets too hot. And then anyway, so, but they turned out really good. Um, you, I did garnish it with, um, it called for like a tahini sauce that I didn't make, but I did have it. I did eat it with Greek yogurt just because it was delicious. Um, and it was good. It was really good. I, it was a great recipe that worked out well. I probably just wouldn't because it's so easy to get good falafel out that I don't feel the need to make it myself, you know, but it was good. And, um, it said in the recipe here, I've tried falafel, the author says, I've tried falafel a hundred different ways, you know, light and fluffy, small and crispy, blah, 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 blah. But this is the one that he selected to put in his book. So for whatever that's worth. And um, yeah, it, it, it was good. So I can't say I would necessarily recommend doing it unless you are into frying, but like it's worth a try because it was very delicious. Well, I'm impressed. I gotta say that I personally flagged like several falafel recipes to potentially make for this category and was just like, I'm not doing it. It's too much. It's like, there's so many steps and I'm super impressed that you did it, even though you did <laughs> decide that maybe it's not worth it entirely. Um, I think it's really cool that you took it on and it was successful. So well done. Yeah, good for you. I've I've never made them from scratch. I've 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 bought a mix. They have a really good mix at by the pound. And I've, you know, I've seen it at the store. But yeah. And the other thing when when I've made them is I don't like frying them either. Um, I have baked them before. I've heard that too. Yes. And, and they I do fine. I could do that. Yeah. I was hopeful when I read the recipe that it talked about the baking sheet that you laid on. <laughs> I was like, oh, good. But then I kept praying. And I was like, no, I'm going to. Yeah. Fry. You could. No, and it wasn't not worth it. It's just not something that I'm going to be like, I'm going to be making this all the time. It was kind right. of a once in a while. It's a process. It's a process. Yeah. Exactly. So, okay. Um, oh, well, uh, I was, there's just one last thing in this article. Um, they had chickpea cakes that was the other thing i was going to make which to me was a falafel so oh, yeah anyway i'm glad I, I switched out so yeah good sharing cool all right well thanks everybody for the delicious chickpea recipes and thanks to our viewers for watching recipe share be sure to click the link below to look at the event page at onaadl.org to find the recipes that we talked about today and feel free to share your own in the comments Join us next time when we will be talking about trying a new technique, I think. Right, guys? Great. All right. I'm struggling with that today. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe, share. Recipe, share. Share a little recipe.